Hi everyone, this is my presentation video of the MSU for the Promoters Challenge, which will be taking place at Forum Next 2021 in Frankfurt, Germany from the 16th to the 19th this November. The MSU, which stands for Material Shooting Unit, is a device that can be installed on almost any FDM 3D printer in order to allow it to print with multiple filaments, allowing for the use of different materials and color in the same print. The design is based on the open source MMU2, but with key changes to reduce price and increase compatibility. The MSU can be built for 70 US dollars. It supports up to 5 filaments, but the design could easily be modified to support up to 10 filaments without any significant cost increase. That being said, what are the benefits of having such an upgrade on 3D printers? And why do I believe that making multi-material 3D printing cheap and widely available is going to be the next step in 3D printing? Instead of going with fake examples, I will actually use the other participants' work and show in which way multi-material 3D printing could help with the design and prototyping of those elements. The most obvious use case of a multi-material upgrade is the combination of flexible and solid filament in order to create a rigid yet comfortable print. Projects like the x or the Full and Prosthetic for Dogs would benefit from having a softer interface with the skin or fur while preserving the kind of rigidity needed for something like a plaster or prosthetic. It can also have a lot of benefits when it comes to things like shoe manufacturing and prototyping. The shoe can be printed in one part, without the need for any extra glue or any extra assembly. Things like adding a carbon plate or other similar performance enhancing technology becomes much more feasible compared to other manufacturing means. This is also applicable to Athos's uh, 3D printed climbing shoes. So if they were to use a multi-material 3D printing solution, which in this case is not the MSU because they need industrial grade production equipment. Uh, but if they were to use a multi-material solution, what they could do is 3D print the shoe in one single part. This has uh, two great benefits. The first one being that you remove any assembly, which is particularly important when you consider that the business model is to have highly customizable on a per client basis, 3 printed shoes. Uh, the second benefit is that you don't have to use any glue, uh, which means that you have one less component to worry about and also uh, is a bit better for the environment. Then you obviously have the benefit of being able to print with multiple colors. I will now list most of the other applications that I can think of but don't really have time to cover in great detail. You can have variable hardness through your model allowing you to create really complex compliant devices. Materials that are really hard to print or that are extremely expensive can be combined with other easier to print or cheaper materials in order to reduce costs and reduce printing difficulty while combining the benefits of each material. It simplifies overmolding prototyping and allows testing of mechanical bonding, which cannot be done otherwise. Mechanical bonding itself can be done with much more intricate shapes compared to overmolding, allowing for a chainmail like bond between materials that is much stronger. It also allows for the use of soluble supports. Um, and if filament technology keeps advancing at the speed that it's currently going at, uh, things like integrated circuits might even be possible. I could go on and on about the use cases for the MSU, but let's take a look at the cost saving measures that allow this device to be so cheap. The MSU was designed with compatibility and cost in mind, and the first big cost saving measure is to have everything connected to the 3D printer's mainboard. A lot of the other solutions use a separate control board, which means extra cost and complexity due to having to manage a connection between the device and the printer. The design was also reduced to the bare minimum, and only one extra servo motor is required as the original extruder motor of the printer can be used. Most of the parts are also 3D printed, meaning that one can buy a printer, print all of the parts required for the MSU, and be able to use multiple filaments for under $70. This, added to the fact that the MSU is compatible with almost any FDM 3D printer, means it can have a functional printer with the MSU for cheaper than the other current multi-material solutions that exist. How do I know this? Well, right as I was preparing for the contest and started printing samples for Formnex, my Anet E10 went boom because of a faulty heated bed, which ironically was one of the only remaining parts of the original printer as it was so badly designed that most of them ended up failing after a couple months of use. But let's not get too sidetracked here because I could complain about this for hours. The result was pretty bad arcing on the power supply side of things, frying my mainboard for the second time I have to mention, and completely killing what was left of the printer and also any patience that, had, that I had left for that thing. So I bought a new printer, assembled it, printed all the parts required for the MSU, 
and had it up and working in two days for under $250, which is mind blowing when you know that the Pilot 3 is worth $600 and doesn't include a printer. Now the Pilot 3, which is one of the competing solutions, definitely has its advantages, but that almost 10x difference makes the MSU just that much more attainable for most people. Now, how does the MSU work? Well, the theory behind it is pretty simple, but like most things, putting it in practice is a completely different story. The MSU uses a barrel system with bearings at different intervals that applies pressure on a different filament based on its angle. In other words, the idler. The idler is controlled by a servo motor which allows us to decide which filament we want to control and press against the extruder. A typical filament change would go this way. The idler presses on the first filament, allowing us to push, push it up to the nozzle. The MSU then acts as an extruder and we print the first layer uh, that needs to be made out of the first material. We then retract that filament up to the merger, select the second filament, push it back up to the nozzle and then keep on printing with that new material. Now this is only the theory and things like excessive stringing or deformation of the filament due to heating and cooling are all things that need to be considered and mitigated while extracting the filament. I won't go into too many details but a lot of tuning is required on a per extruder basis in order to get reliable printing. This is something that I am trying to solve by having a set of default values and slicer profiles for each extruder out there. For now, the number of people using the MSU is still limited, but once that number grows enough, the setup might simply be picking your extruder out of the list of already tuned profiles and being able to print instantly. This is where the open source aspect of the project really helps. The MSU, 3D files, modified firmware, and build information is all available on GitHub and free of use under the GPL3 license. This means that anyone can build this device, help with the development of new features, use it for commercial purposes, and modify the firmware as long as it stays under this license. If you're interested in this project, or just want to take a look at it, or even maybe you want to build the MSU for yourself, check out the GitHub repo which I will have linked in the description of this video. Uh, I have also created a Discord server where people can ask questions, follow the development of the MSU, and propose new ideas, uh, and which will also be linked down below. Oh, you made it to the end of the video. Thank you very much for your time. I also want to thank everyone that has helped me with the development of the MSU, either through contributing both with the software and hardware side of things, people that have supported the project financially, and everyone that has started or built the MSU while it is still under constant development, helping me test everything and providing feedback on the device, which was extremely valuable. Once again, big thanks to everyone. I discovered the open source community through this project and I gotta say it went way further than I ever expected it to go. And I have gotten as much back as I have put in, which is pretty incredible when you know that all of it is based on someone willingly choosing to help for no other reason than contributing to a project that they want to succeed or use. That's it for this video. I am currently drowning under the workload from uni and internship interviews and search related stuff, so I don't have as much time to work on the MSU and make videos, but the project is still going strong even if it's my first video in weeks or even months. That's it for me. Bye guys. Have a very nice day and uh, see you next time.